this is a finite element problem. Uh, we are looking at a spring assemblage as it's shown right here. We have a wall, we have two elements where they are represented as springs. We have a force applied at this end, F equals 600 pounds, and they want us to find through the direct stiffness method, displacement at uh, point one, two, and three, elemental forces in both elements, element one and two, and also the reaction at point one. So as a main formula that we're gonna be relying on throughout this problem is force on a spring, F equals Kx. And here's a quick deduction of the stiffness matrix K, where for one element, and this is pretty much the part that you need to remember because we're gonna need it over and over again. K equals the stiffness matrix where K, negative K, negative K, K. Remember this one. Now the value of K is given for us K1 is the same as K2. Both springs are the same kind and it's 2000 pounds per inch. Now. We're going to use this information to find our elemental stiffness matrix for each element. For element 1, we're going to write it up 1. K1 equals the matrix that I just told you that uh, we should remember. You, we're going to use it, fill it in. We're going to factor out the 2000, so it's not so ugly to look at. And this is what we have. We're going to do the same thing. For the second element, 2, K2 equals 2000, and the same thing what we've seen here. Now, very important to note that even though K1 and K2 look like they are the exactly same thing, but behind the scenes there is something very important that we need to remember. And sometimes I like to even write it ne right next to it so I don't forget. This one is for element 1. And element 1 is bordered by point 1 and point 2. So therefore, I mark it U1, U2, U1, U2. I do the same for element 2. Element 2 is bordered by point 2 and 3. Therefore, that's what we're going to mark here. U2, U3, U2, U3. This information will be very important at the next step where we're going to assemble our global stiffness matrix. All right, here it is. I already started writing it up just so we can have some structure. The 2000, both of these have it. So we're going to factor it out, put it in the front so we don't have to worry about it. Now, where do these ones come from? For the global stiffness matrix, we need to include all of the points that we're talking about in both elements. So U1, U2, U3 need to be included here. Therefore, I like to mark these just as much as I do it on the elemental uh, matrices. So U1, U2, and U3. Now, this will help me transfer both of these informations into this one. This one came, what location is it at? It's at U1 with U1, right? So from this matrix, U1, U1 is this one. You put it there. U2, U1 is negative one. So I'm gonna find the same location, U2, U1, negative one. U1 and U2 is negative 1. I'm going to find the same location. U1, U2, we're going to put in negative 1. Now U2, U2 is 1. So I'm going to come here and put the 1. But I'm going to use a pencil so I can erase it. Because in this matrix I also have a U2, U2 where with another 1. So this one is actually one plus one. So that is a two. Well, maybe I'm not going to erase it. I'm just going to leave it there so we can see it. That's a one plus one coming from both matrices because they overlap at this location. 
which is pretty much logical because you can see that they both elements meet here at point 2. Now let's continue and fill out the missing pieces. U3, U2, negative 1, U3, U2, we have a negative 1 here, U2, U3, negative 1, U2, U3, negative 1, and U3, U3 is 1, U3, U3, 1. Now, if you notice, these 0 and 0, we never touch them because there's no information that would go in those corners, so therefore those corners we fill in with zeros. Okay, now that we have our stiffness matrix, our global stiffness matrix, we're going to come back to our F equals KX formula. We're going to write it up in matrix form, where the global forces equal global stiffness matrix times the displacements. Okay, let's expand this, shall we? Global forces, global force at point 1, point 2, and point 3 equals global stiffness matrix, which we found right here, 2000 times the matrix and times the displacements at U1, U2, and U3. Now, we need to, at this point, it's very convenient, so to say, to make sure that we note which points uh, are fixed, because at those points, like at point 1, we can immediately deduct that displacement will be zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this, that U1 is zero. And the importance of this step is because if we do this, from this point on, we can simply pretend that this line doesn't even exist. Just ignore it. And we can use these two to continue our calculation. If we look at those two, they are simply just a system of equations with two equations. Multiply these two out, equal to what we have here. F2, at, do we have any global force happening here? No, there's nothing. And F3 is given. So this is 600. So 0, 600 equals this matrix multiplied by this times the 2000. And we're going to go ahead and solve the system of equation for U2 and U3. U2 equals 0.3 inches. U3 equals 0.6 inches. These are our two displacements at point 2 at node 2 and at node 3. Now we're going to continue by finding our elemental forces and let's start with element 1. Same formula that we've been using until now, the F equals KX, but at this time we're going to use it not globally like we did up here, but locally for element 1. Therefore our local F equals local k and times displacement. Let's expand that. Our two forces that belong to element 1 is F at point 1, x, belonging to element 1, F 2, x, belonging to element 1, equals two time, 2000 times the local stiffness matrix times u1 and u2. You can also kind of look at it, let's see, uh, force at 1, displacement at 1, force at 2, displacement at 2. Let's plug in u1 and u2, we know both values, u1 is 0, u2 is 0.3, we found it right here. Multiply these matrices out, and then we have f1x, f2x for element 1 equals negative 600, 600. From here, we can just simply lift it out and write it nicely. F, uh, local force at point 1 in the x direction, belonging to element 1, equals negative 600. F2x to element 1, 200. I mean 600, but positive. 
you can do a little check in your head or you can even draw it do a free body diagram for this element element one it needs to be in equilibrium right so at point one we have negative 600 point two we would have positive 600 it's in equilibrium therefore it's correct we're gonna set up and do the same calculation for element two f 2x f 3x for element two equals we're using this formula right here the local one for element two k displacement and all the way same process as above we find f 2x for element two negative 600 f 3x for element two is positive 600 pounds another check that you can do is point two free body diagram and at point two we see that we had point two calculation in two different places so therefore we need to make sure that point two is in equilibrium and as we can tell it is we have 600 one way 600 the other way therefore point two is in equilibrium and for our final calculation we're gonna come back to this line that we abandoned over here and we're gonna do our reaction calculation at point one we're gonna use the global version of our f equals kx formula the spring formula you can write the entire setup that we had above f1 f2 f3 fill in the entire global stiffness matrix but it's not necessary we don't need those numbers because we are working we are interested only in f1 to find f1 we need this line we need to multiply it and add it up with this line times 2000 like we see it here f1 equals 2000 1 times u1 plus negative 1 times u2 plus 0 times u3 and this one will give us f1 negative 600 and which is pretty much logical because we are applying a 600 pound force this way and in order to be in equilibrium we need another 600 pound force going that way otherwise wouldn't be in equilibrium and we proved it with numbers as well